Hey, what's up, folks? A month or so ago, I did a thing on Snowpack. It's a new front-end build tool that's really cool. It's extraordinarily fast, and the way it does its development environment with ESM modules rather than bundling is pretty awesome. Well, Snowpack now has their version 3.0 release. It was in January. And around the same time, beginning of the year, I decided Internet Explorer can suck it. I am not supporting that anymore. So I decided to use Snowpack to make a new build system for GeoPortal, which is my most popular website amongst the citizenry. And I wanted to share with you how I did that and some things I ran into that you might run into and what the result is. And overall, I'm extremely happy with it. Now, let's jump right in. I think I've got some code in some different places. Yep. What are we looking at here? Ah, start over here. Now, looking at a package.json is can be very misleading because you might have one package in there, but that thing might load 18,000 million other packages. But a dirty, long package.json just makes me anxious. Over on the right, we have the old GeoPortal build system, and it's using Webpack. And it also does a bunch of babel -y stuff to try to support Internet Explorer 11 and a bunch of polyfills for Internet Explorer 11. You can see it is a giant mess. These are just the development dependencies. You can see a whole bunch of Webpack related things, a whole bunch of Babel related things. And the dependencies that get shipped to the client include some polyfills and some more Babel. Whole bunch of stuff. Over on the left is the new Snowpack package.json. And for that whole build system, it's it's so nice. This is all the development dependencies. We have Snowpack and a few Snowpack plugins, one for PostCSS and one for Svelte. We've got some PostCSS related stuff like Auto Prefixer and Tailwind, and we've got Workbox CLI. Uh, there's not a plugin for Snowpack that builds your PWA service worker that I could find, uh, but uh, it's very easy to do from the command line as part of the build system. So that was that, what that workbox CLI is. For the dependencies that get shipped, all I really need there are Svelte, Mapbox GL version uh, 1. I really should switch that to Le uh, Map Libre at this point. And D3 scale chromatic. And that's it. That is the whole package.json. Um, I'm, I'm very, very happy with that. Now, the configuration, how do you configure it to actually do all your building stuff? This is the old systems webpack configuration, and you see it goes on for over 100 lines of just config and all kinds of plugins. And uh, I, there are webpack whispers that can just, you know, sneeze, and this flies out, and, and they're great. And the, uh, I'm happy for you people, and, and I also hate you. Because it takes me a solid, when I want to start on a project, it might take me a day of just dorking with Webpack to get it configured to do all the different things I need it to do. It's a lot. It's, it's Babely stuff and Svelte stuff and PostCSS stuff and uh, code splitting and blah. Now, for Snowpack, this is the whole thing. Uh, and you can see this is already much less stress inducing. So I give it some mount options and where I want the developer port to be and where I want it to throw stuff when it's done. I'm loading uh, some plugins uh, for PostCSS and Svelte. This snowpack plugin.env, I don't even know what that does, but it just happens to be in every snowpack template I see. So. YOLO. Down at the bottom, these are the tools for the the build process. It's specifying what I want for that. Now there are different ways you can build your project in Snowpack. Snowpack uh, 
has built in uh, ES build, which is a new build system, which the developers or really the developer. It's mostly one person say is not quite ready for prime time, but it's pretty close. Um, you can also put, use Snowpack plugins for your build system. Like there's a Snowpack Webpack plugin. I think there's one for Parcel and there's one for Rollup. But, uh, and those work. I tried the Snowpack uh, Webpack plugin and it works fine. It, it does everything it, it needs to do. The nice thing about it is Snowpack does all of its processing and then just feeds the results to Webpack to do its thing. So Webpack doesn't have to know about Svelte or Post CSS or any of that happy stuff because Snowpack's already done all that for it. So you don't need any Webpack config for, for most scenarios, which is nice. But I want to use the built-in ES build because it's it's super fast and, and again, YOLO. So uh, I just have some options for it here. I want it to minify, and that minifies CSS too, so you don't need this CS Nano in your in your uh, post CSS config anymore. Bundle, you have the option, and by default, it does not bundle. It uses ESM modules, which all the modern browsers can understand. Um, which for a small project might be fine. When I do that for this quite large project, uh, the browser ends up fetching like 80 little files and. Uh, you can HTTP to me all day. That is not efficient. So we're going to do some bundling and we're going to do code splitting because uh, we don't want to ship uh, Mapbox GL down with the main bundle because it's honking enormous. And we want a tree shake to get rid of new stuff and target ES 2018. I should probably change it to 2019 if I'm not changed, not supporting Internet Explorer. But away we go. That's the entire config for when it when it builds. And when you build, you just say snowpack build. Now there are, is one caveat to the build I noticed, and this is particularly when you're doing splitting. It might only be when you're doing splitting. Is it puts the split out file. Uh, which is Mapbox GL in this case, in this Snowpack subfolder, but it puts it in the dist root, but it tells the JavaScript code to fetch it in this dist subfolder. So what I do, which is kind of janky, and there's probably a way to fix this in the config, and I, I don't know what it is, is just as I'll do a Snowpack build, and I'll just move that folder, and then I'll run Workbox to generate the service worker stuff. Janky! But it works perfectly fine. So when it runs, it builds this disk folder. Let's take a look at that kind of stuff. So let's see. Uh, see our disk folder now, which is what the, the web browser is going to be downloading. Not quite all of it, because there are like icons for that are specific to Apple and specific to Microsoft's mobile stuff. Ah, yeah, I made it funny. And uh, and Android mobile stuff. But 1632 is the total size in uh, bytes of the distribution folder. On the old site, it was 1860. So we lost like 230 kilobytes right off the top that our browsers need to load. Now some of that is, uh, actually a lot of that is the polyfilling and an additional 30 kilobytes that is just not having to babel all of your stuff over into something IE can understand. So we're saving 230 kilobytes right off the top. And what that looks like is a uh, Like so, there's your main folder with your index.html and your your uh, manifest.json and oh, build manifest. I can probably just delete that. There are a couple artifacts that Snowpack will sneak in there that you, you just really don't need. 
So yeah, I should probably get rid of that. Ooh, strip off another 32 kilobytes from that total, please. And some stuff that just gets copied wholesale over from your a public folder, like your images and, and this data folder in my GL styles. And it builds the CSS and JS into this dist folder. And then within that dist folder, if you're uh, uh, code splitting some packages, it'll put them in this no pack package subfolder. And there's Mapbox GL. And that's why it's off by itself on a load when necessary island, because it's 751 kilobytes all by its lonesome. All right. So how does that look in terms of performance? Yeah. Yeah, let's look at that first. And then I'll, I'll swoop back around and tell you a few caveats. Let's see. Okay. So we're doing good either way. Over on the right is the old stuff. And over on the left is the new stuff. The uh, metrics here are all within Mart you know, rounding errors for this stuff. You, it's when you run the lighthouse, you can run it 10 times in a row and you'll get 10 very slightly different results because it's testing network related things too. And you, I mean, you just don't know what's going on on the network. Now, my total shipped stuff is a bit bigger. It's about 24 kilobytes bigger. And the reason is, are, is some build things and some choices I made. The actual amount if you use the website is smaller by a decent amount. Uh, but in the old site, I was actually code splitting twice. Once just to get the very smallest bit of JavaScript to run the page when you first load it. And then another code split to get you to run the rest of the Svelte stuff if you actually picked an address. And then another one to get Mapbox DL. And this one, and the new one, I said, uh, life's too short. And I'm just loading everything not Mapbox GL in the main script, so it's there and ready. And then Mapbox GL is, is code split off. So that's how we got from 41 kilobytes to 60 kilobytes of JavaScript. Our style sheet is going up too because it was also splitting the style sheet. Uh, based on those couple of splits. And here I'm just lumping it all into one. The actual CSS delivered in total is quite a bit smaller now, but the upfront cost is a little bit more. And everything else is just whatever. But you can see the performance. And people, don't get obsessed with getting 100s on Lighthouse. Lighthouse is just a synthetic benchmark that doesn't, is helpful, but is not the end of the world. And uh, if it's green, you're good. Don't make yourself crazy. I make myself crazy. Like if, if it gives me a 99, I'll refresh it until it gives me a 100 because, damn it, I deserve a 100. One interesting thing about Lighthouse, and maybe someone can enlighten me, this largest content, contentful paint, uh, I get dinged by that every time, but what dings me is this freaking, it says, what's my largest contentful paint? It's a freaking H1 tag. It's just some text every time. What the actual hell, Lighthouse? How is this a problem? Anyway, it's not a problem. I'm in the green. I shouldn't obsess. But uh, anyway, performance is great. In both cases, it was it was good before, but before to get it there was a hell of a pain in the ass, and now it's just fairly straightforward to get that done. A couple of caveats. First, I, I mentioned that uh, it can, when it's using the ES build tool, depending on how you have it configured it can put stuff in the wrong place or just add some extra stuff like this build manifest um it there's just this is just a big json file telling you what it did 
uh, it shouldn't really be shipped anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Um, so yeah, I can delete that and get rid of another 30K right off the top. And I did have to, so what, what I'll do in my package, Jason, is I'll just add another little thing and I'll just remove that file, which is janky. But, uh, you know, it's whatever. It's not that big a deal. Another interesting thing is Tailwind. Uh, Snowpack is super fast, but uh, Tailwind will kick it right in its sensitive place. And I don't know why. And what's interesting, too, is Tailwind 2 is much worse than Tailwind 1.9.6. And this isn't really a Snowpack thing, it seems. I was looking through some some issues and I found the same complaint about Tailwind 2 and Webpack how it's it's like three times as slow as 1.96 I'm still on Tailwind uh, 1 because they uh, they broke a couple of things in Tailwind 2 for me which is not that big a deal the big deal is is they they changed their whole color palettes so I, I just give me Tailwind 2 and and all of my colors have changed and I'm I'm sad they got rid of orange why? What the hell? But anyway, those are two things to note. Another thing is uh, getting PostCSS import to work is tricky. I've seen lots of issue reports on that as well. It's not that big a deal. Rather than just importing a CSS file that imported all my other CSS files, I just import all the CSS files uh, in the order I want, and it works basically the same. So it's not that big a deal. Those are a few of the sticking points I ran into, and but beyond that, it's a joy to develop with and to uh, build your code with. I hope that helped. Uh, Snowpack is awesome. Check it out. I hope your new year is going great. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.